Hi everyone, I hope this finds you doing well. I just wanted to take a moment to invite you to visit the website at Mindset Matters Podcast One, that's the number one, dot com. There you'll find uh, the blog that has pictures that go with each episode. You'll also find all the episodes if you want to go back and hear some earlier episodes. And there's also multiple ways that um, allow you to interact. I would love to hear from you. You can either leave a message uh, by mail, email, or you can leave a voicemail. Just click on the microphone and uh, say anything you would like that would be uplifting to other listeners or simply answer the prompt, what gives you hope? And that would be a nice way of um, giving hope to others. I hope you enjoy today's podcast on Shira Me. Join us on a journey through time as we unravel the incredible and heartwarming tale of Sher Ami, the unsung hero of World War I. In this episode, we fly into the skies and explore the extraordinary exploits of a brave little messenger pigeon whose courageous feats went beyond the call of duty. Get ready for a soaring adventure filled with war, compassion, and the astonishing resilience of one unforgettable bird. Familiar to many is the tale of the Lost Battalion, a story embedded in our historical consciousness. However, often overlooked is the remarkable contribution of a pigeon named Cher Ami, whose significance in the annals of World War I remains less widely recognized. This diminutive bird emerged as an unsung hero playing a pivotal role in the unfolding events that went beyond the general knowledge of the battalion's ordeal. For those of us who may need a little history brush-up, like I did, on the Lost Battalion, let's briefly talk about what was happening in this time during World War I. The moniker Lost Battalion designates the nine companies comprising approximately 554 men from the U.S. 77th Division. These soldiers found themselves isolated by German forces following an American offensive in the Argonne Forest in October of 1918 during World War I. Around 197 individuals lost their lives in combat, with roughly 150 listed as missing or captured prior to the rescue of the remaining 194 men. Major Charles W. Whittlesey served as their leader throughout this challenging period. On the 2nd of October, the 77th Division initiated an offensive in the Argonne, operating under the assumption that French forces were providing support on their left flank, and two American units, including the 92nd Infantry Division, were reinforcing their right. In the 77th sector, certain units, such as Whittlesey's 308th Infantry, were achieving notable progress. Unbeknownst to Whittlesey's detachment, the units on their left and right had encountered impediments, causing a halt in their advance. Unaware of this circumstance, the forces that later earned the name the Lost Battalion pressed forward, surpassing the rest of the Allied line and ultimately becoming encircled by German forces. Over the ensuing six days, enduring substantial casualties, the Lost Battalion and the American units striving to provide assistance engaged in a fierce battle within the Argonne Forest. The battalion endured numerous challenges, grappling with scarcities in both food and water. Access to water required perilous crawls under enemy fire to reach a nearby stream. Ammunition supplies dwindled, and communication hurdles surfaced, occasionally subjecting them to artillery bombardment from their own forces. Efforts to replenish the battalion through airdrops proved unsuccessful, as all supplies veered off course, becoming either lost in the woods or falling into the hands of the German forces. As each messenger dispatched by Whittlesey either became disoriented or encountered German patrols, 
carrier pigeons emerged as the sole means of communication. Due to their distinctive homing instinct, carrier pigeons have historically served a crucial function in warfare, functioning as military messengers, and with advancements in technology, even photographers. In both the First and Second World Wars, carrier pigeons were employed to convey messages to their designated home coops situated behind the front lines. Frequently, these pigeons bore crucial messages that proved instrumental in saving lives and securing victories. The Army's preliminary trials involving the employment of pigeons in the four decades leading up to World War I yielded varied outcomes, encompassing a few regrettable incidents involving interactions with hawks. Nevertheless, the engagement with European leaders convinced the Army to make a renewed attempt. They identified two individuals with extensive experience in breeding and working with pigeons, David C. Buscal and John L. Carney. Training carrier pigeons involves a systematic and gradual process to develop their homing instincts and communication skills. Here's a quick overview of how carrier pigeons are typically trained. When they're young, they experience early familiarization. Pigeon training begins when the birds are still squabs or young pigeons. Handlers expose them to their loft, providing a sense of home and security. Familiarization with the loft's location is crucial for the pigeons to navigate back later. Then they experience basic handling. Handlers introduce basic handling routines to accustom the pigeons to human interaction. This includes gentle touches, feeding from the handler's hand, and positive reinforcement to build trust. As the pigeons mature, trainers conduct short orientation flights within a controlled environment. These flights help the pigeons recognize their surroundings and learn to navigate back to the loft. Gradually, the pigeons are taken on longer and more challenging flights. This step-by-step -step approach ensures that the birds are capable of finding their way home over extended distances. Trainers often release pigeons at increasing distances and observe their ability to return promptly. To simulate real-life scenarios, trainers introduce messages tied to the pigeon's legs. This mimics the ultimate purpose of carrier pigeons as messengers. The birds learn to carry small canisters or tubes containing messages securely attached to their legs. Training pigeons under different weather conditions and at various times of the day helps them adapt to unpredictable situations. Pigeons are known for their ability to navigate using sun position, magnetic fields, and other environmental cues. Over generations, selective breeding is employed to enhance the homing instincts of carrier pigeons. Pigeons that consistently demonstrate strong homing abilities and intelligence are chosen as breeding pairs to pass on these desirable traits. Positive reinforcement, such as rewarding pigeons with food upon successful return, plays a crucial role in reinforcing the desired behaviors. This helps solidify the association between the act of returning and receiving a reward. Regular exercise and flights maintain the pigeon's physical fitness and contribute to their overall well-being. This practice ensures that the pigeons remain capable and motivated to perform their tasks effectively. In October 1917, Buscal, accompanied by six non-commissioned officers, 800 pigeons, and a substantial supply of feed, embarked on the USS Agamemnon, bound for France. By November 1918, breeding pairs had yielded over 4,000 young birds. The avian trainees commenced their training at the age of five weeks. By the time they reached 10 weeks, a considerable number of them were deployed to the trenches, adeptly carrying messages across distances of approximately 10 miles. Every pigeon had its right wing primary flight feather imprinted with U.S. and the designated loft number. The operation also incorporated backpacks designed to accommodate four birds, complete with message tubes, pencils, and a gas-resistant cover. 
The military trained pigeon handlers to deploy the birds in instances where other forms of communication had faltered or were deemed too sluggish. During the period from August 29 to September 11 of 1918, a single mobile loft received a total of 78 crucial messages from the front lines. Initially, the Army intended to leave the pigeons in Europe upon the conclusion of the war. However, Russell suspects successfully persuaded sorry, his superiors to permit the pigeons to return to the United States. Subsequently, numerous veteran pigeons were auctioned for private use, facilitating their reintegration into civilian life. So that gives us a little background on the Lost Battalion and the etiology of carrier pigeons. Cher Ami, a male pigeon, whose name means dear friend in French, was part of a fleet of nearly 600 carrier pigeons utilized by the U.S. Army Signal Corps in the First World War. Despite the progress in communication technology during the conflict, carrier pigeons remained invaluable. Radios hindered by their size and vulnerability to delicate wires were not as dependable, Additionally, the deployment of new wires was not always a swift or safe option in certain situations. Although not widely embraced as a conventional means of communication, pigeons demonstrated their reliability. The typical homing pigeon boasts an impressive flight speed of around 50 miles per hour, rendering them a swift and efficient method of communication. However, despite their speed, these pigeons were frequently targeted by enemy gunfire, diminishing their popularity as messengers. Indeed, German machine gunners underwent rigorous training to detect and eliminate these birds using their lethal MG-08s, capable of firing over 500 rounds per minute. Using pigeons as a means of communication posed significant risks, as a shot-down pigeon could result in the interception of the message by enemy forces. The carrier pigeon's courageous contributions gained notable recognition during the Meuse-Argonne Offensive of 1918. On the 2nd of October, 1918, members of the 77th Division, advancing deeply into the Argonne Forest, found themselves ensnared beyond enemy lines on the inclines of a hill. Isolated from reinforcements and resources, about 550 soldiers comprising the 306th, 307th, and 308th Regiments, led by Major Charles Whittlesley, maintained their position against a significantly larger German force for an extended period. Caught in a brutal onslaught of machine gun fire amidst relentless rain, the Lost Battalion resiliently maintained their position against ferocious German assaults. Ironically, they also became the receivers of friendly fire. On the 4th of October, American heavy artillery inadvertently initiated a bombardment on the Lost Battalion's position, resulting in the tragic loss of 30 men, who were steadfastly holding the line. Major Whittlesey and his troops witnessed a heart-wrenching scene as one after another carrier pigeons fell from the sky, the atmosphere torn apart by German gunfire. In a dire situation, with dwindling supplies and a rapidly rising casualty count, Major Whittlesey made a desperate move, dispatching his final messenger, Cher Ami, to carry a note to the American lines. The urgent message read, quote, We are along the road parallel to 276.4. Our own artillery is dropping a barrage directly on us. For heaven's sakes, stop it. End quote. Surrounded by relentless gunfire from every direction, Cher Ami became the Lost Battalion's last hope for survival on that hill. The stakes were high, and the fate of the trapped soldiers rested on the wings of a courageous pigeon. With fearless determination, the valiant bird soared directly into the hail of German gunfire, 
deftly maneuvering to evade bullets in its path. However, luck proved fleeting as Cher Ami succumbed to a chest wound shortly after taking flight, leaving American soldiers in dismay as their final beacon of hope plummeted to the ground. Yet, defying all odds, Cher Ami miraculously rose again. Battered but not undeterred, the resilient little bird ascended once more, bravely confronting successive volleys of gunfire. Against all odds, Cher Ami soared through the air, covering an impressive 25 miles in just about half an hour. Despite arriving at the base heavily wounded, the tenacious pigeon defied the odds and emerged from the perilous journey alive. The heroic efforts of army medics managed to snatch Cher Ami from the clutches of death, but the toll on the brave little pigeon was evident. His right leg barely clung to his body, and a shroud of darkness enveloped one of his eyes. Yet, in a twist of fate, Cher Ami's daring delivery wielded unparalleled influence. It coerced the artillery to halt its barrage and adopt new firing coordinates, steering clear of the perilous vicinity of American lines. The following day witnessed a rain of shells pounding German positions, alleviating the strain on the battered 77th Battalion and tipping the scales in favor of the American forces. By October 8th, 194 men successfully returned to the American lines, their salvation attributed to the sacrificial efforts of Cher Ami. In recognition of his pivotal role in rescuing the 77th Division, Cher Ami earned the esteemed Croix de Guerre, a prestigious military accolade from France that commended his extraordinary bravery on the battlefield. General John Pershing, at the helm of the American Exp Expeditionary Force, expressed, quote, There isn't anything the United States can do too much for this bird, end quote, underscoring the profound gratitude for Cher Ami's remarkable service. Returning to the United States under the watchful care of its trainer, Captain John Carney, Cher Ami's journey took an unexpected turn. On June 13, 1919, the Courageous Pigeon took its final flight, departing this world at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Despite this farewell, Cher Ami's legacy endured as its body was meticulously preserved and bestowed upon the American government with the reverence it had rightfully earned. The profound impact of one courageous bird's bravery and selflessness is immeasurable, leaving us to wonder how many families owe their very existence to this little feathered hero. Presently, Cher Ami is showcased at the Smithsonian Museum of American History, serving as a poignant testament to his indomitable spirit. Across the decades, his tale has become an enduring part of the American narrative, etching his bravery into the collective hearts and minds of the nation, a legacy that will endure, ensuring Jeremy is never forgotten. Please enjoy this National Geographic clip about carrier pigeons and Jeremy. Sky rats, sewer eagles, gutter falcons, millions of them, each one pecking up to 16,000 times a day, defecating up to 25 pounds a year decorating our cars, our statues, even us. It seems they're always getting in the way. But take another look. Pigeons are one of nature's most successful creatures, thriving in almost every city and town, wherever we are. And pigeons are exceptional navigators, always finding their nests across the city or the continent. It's an internal drive scientists call homing. Drop a pigeon almost anywhere, even thousands of miles away, and they'll successfully find their way home. In ancient times, when something absolutely, positively had to get there, tie it to a pigeon. In wartime, pigeon messengers were fast, dependable, and nearly impossible to intercept. 
95% of pigeons used in combat successfully delivered their message. More reliable than radios on the battlefield. A World War I pigeon named Cher Ami took enemy fire in his chest and lost a leg. He still flew to headquarters, saving soldiers trapped behind enemy lines. Joining the ranks of over 30 pigeons awarded medals of valor during wartime. One key to a pigeon messenger's success, speed. To send a message 50 miles, a world-class runner needs almost five hours, and a horse almost two hours. But a pigeon, less than 60 minutes. Sorting and accessing the vast amounts of data they're bombarded with demands another hidden power, memory. Research at Tufts University in Massachusetts aims to discover just how good pigeon memory is. Psychologist Bob Cook's been working with one special pigeon for eight years. This is Linus, the master of memory, the pigeon of particulars, knows up to a thousand images. So this is the testing chamber that uh, we use to, uh, to study the intelligence of pigeons. Inside the chamber is a touch screen that the pigeon pecks at to let us know what he's doing. Two food trays flank a touchscreen video display. Each picture releases food into one of the trays. Both will illuminate, but Linus must remember which tray is assigned to which picture. And he reliably does, for over a thousand images, remembering to turn right or left depending on the picture. They're remarkable vision machines. They're remarkable memory machines. You know, they do this all uh, with a brain that's really not much bigger than a thumb. I hope you enjoyed that audio clip from National Geographic. If you would like to read more about Cher Ami, there's a great book titled Cher Ami and Major Whittlesey, a novel. And you can buy it in paperback form or also as audiobook. Um, and in that form, it's very entertaining to listen to. It's narrated by uh, Juliana Confield and Noah Michael Levine. And um, it's, it's heartbreaking and funny the way they present the book. There are a lot of children's books um, about Cher Ami, but I chose this one because of the illustrations. They're beautiful. Um, it's Cher Ami based on the World War I legend of the fearless pigeon. And that came out in 2022, written by Miss Potter, um, and the illustrator is Giselle Potter. Um, perhaps they are sisters, I'm not sure. Um, but it's a nice book for kids and very well illustrated. Our quote of the day comes from F. Scott Fitzgerald. He says, quote, it's a funny thing coming home. Nothing changes. Everything looks the same feels the same, even smells the same, you realize what's changed is you. End quote. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. The next episode will be on Christmas Day, and I'm excited about it. I'm going to change up the format um, completely, and it will be a little bit of everything, short stories, poems, a song, um, all of it designed to um, uplift and celebrate the day when hope came into our world. So I hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email Mindset Matters Podcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindset matters podcast, the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.